With just days for candidates to make their final cases to voters, polls are showing a tightening presidential race. Republicans looking to gain some lost ground after a few difficult weeks for Donald Trump, hoping to hold control of the Senate and minimize any losses in the House. Ed O'Brien Murray, nicknamed OB, has been called a conservative campaign Jedi. He's currently trying to help a Republican land an open House seat. He knows the challenges of defining your candidate in relation to the top of the ticket. It's nice to have you here with us. Thank today. you. Thank you for having me. Uh, and I said OB as a nickname, sure. as an O'Brien myself, same uh, nickname. Related somewhere in there. Somewhere in there <laughs> related. Uh, what does it exactly mean to be a Jedi of I conservative some, campaign? Some reporter did that after I won a race uh, a while back, I think a few it means years ago. A lot of like, ah, <laughs> maneuvering. And it seems like this might be a very uh, good time in a campaign cycle where you're doing every single Jedi trick in order to help your candidate win. Is he in the tricky balance of both embracing a Donald Trump and pushing away from a Donald Trump? Isn't there sort of this moral imperative of, I'm a conservative, shouldn't I be embracing someone who actually believes in conservative principles? The, the Republican primary voters nominated Donald Trump. He won fair and square. There was a lot of effort to try to stop that, but he won the nomination. So now it's time to determine who the next president's going to be, and your choice between two people, frankly, at this point. And I think when, when you look across the board, too, when people look at the other people on the ticket that they want to try to vote that aren't the, the, the major parties at this point, that becomes a question of really a protest vote. And what does that do? At the end of the day, Nobody but Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton is going to be the next president. And that's really what it comes down to when you choose between those two. What happens post-election when we're all like, oh, my God, thank God it's over. Now we can move on. But what happens to the GOP? Well, I, I think the GOP comes out of this fractured. But every nominee, when they lose, has that problem. But there were so many people who are like you, right, who've been GOP and running the GOP at a high level for a long time, who were sort of surprised by the Donald Trump voter, right? That's a very different, I mean, listen, there's been many articles written by people in leadership positions who are like, I don't even know anybody early on who's voting for Donald Trump. The question's going to be what this energy does after Donald Trump. Because some of that energy is attacking people who've been in the GOP at high levels. Senator McCain is a great example to use, right? Some of that energy is attacking those very Republicans who could be winning races if they were getting more support internally. Well, more support internally, it's all relative because if you were doing different things and you had that internal support, what would happen to the people that are now rising up? The Tea Party people, the excitement that they brought in 09 and in 10 and, and throughout those years until now, really were about a movement. And what happened now is with that movement, the, the men and women behind it have said, wait a second, we've been doing this now for seven years. What have we gotten for it? What have we really changed? And Donald Trump tapped into that, that disappointment that they had. Earlier on, basically the leadership of the RNC has said to many people like you who are dealing with candidates, do what you can for your own person, right? If, this can, if the top of the ticket's a problem, do what you need to do. Actually, they always say that. They don't say it as publicly, but behind the scenes, and everybody knows that, when you're running, you have to run your race to win your seat. That's what you have to do. What do you think happens? So what, what does, five years from now, when we're sitting down talking about this again, what does the GOP look like? Oh, I think the GOP will be strong. I don't see a problem with that. I think uh, if Hillary does win, and if the polls right now show she is, but momentum is a, is a marvelous thing in campaigns at this point. The turnout, as I said before, is important. I, I think the national polls are going to be interesting, too. Demographics are working against a party that is appealing to a white working class voter. At this, the working class voter is extremely important at this point. It's something that the party has uh, not been strong enough with in the past, and I think that this is bringing them to the, to. to uh, that voter. What do you do after this on November 9th? What does Donald Trump do with the base that he's controlled if he doesn't win this election? Hmm. Because that base that he has now, Sarah Palin in 2008, after her election, she was able, and she lost and went off, and she's a lot quieter now than she's been, but what she was able to do was use all those donors she had and go endorse somebody and swing primaries across the country. And by doing that, that's going to be something he can, he can play in the political process and elect people and, frankly, settle scores people if, he, if that's what he cares to do. We could sit here literally for hours and, and talk about the future of politics in America, but hopefully you'll come back and chat with me eventually. Anytime. That.